Yes, yes, yes. You know, no, it's heard some crazy noise in my background. But this is our brother Akbar Rawson coming to you and wake up African people. And uh, tonight we are, is hip hop dead? Hip hop will never die. Boom, bye, bye. Yes, sir. Hip hop will never die. Excerpts. Brother Black. Uh-huh. We're back again with Brother uh-huh. Black. When you're black, you always come back. And this is part two. We're going to uh-huh. be hitting y'all up tonight with part two, all this information that we had. We got more time on tonight. The other show was an hour. This show is 90 minutes. And uh-huh. uh, we ready for Brother Black to give up some of this information that he has on the rap industry and how it is affecting our people and how... You know, hip hop and uh, rap is two different things. So, brother Black, right. introduce yourself. Well, you know, y'all know me. I hope uh, I go by the Blacksmith. Some people call me Big Ben, the Blacksmith. Some people call me Blacksmith. Some people call me Big. Some people call me Black. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm coming through representing my new book. The name of it is Boom, Bye, Bye, Hip Hop Will Never Die. Uh, An expose on the entertainment industry with a focus on hip hop because, you know, they're all interrelated. And uh, just coming through from the South Bronx, you know what I'm saying, Um, was there from day two. I don't say day one because day two means I was watching it as it was happening, but I wasn't doing it. In the beginning days, people who were 30, you know, since they've been alive, hip hop has been in existence. I saw it come about. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, and just coming through to represent on the Brother Akbar show, uh, excuse me, Wake Up Africa and all that. So, you know, thanks to you and all your people on that side. Yeah, just wake up African people, and uh, yes, we are here to uplift the mind to the mentality of our people and give them some truth. A medium, which they can hear the raw truth come to them from a language, which they can understand from brothers like them that have been through the trenches in the neighborhood. And mm-hmm. um, we know we just know that mostly everything in this country, not mostly everything, everything is controlled by, you know, the system. You know, yes, uh, people think that they are free, I mean, because the system told them they was free. But mm-hmm. are they really free? You know, mm-hmm. uh, are they really being used by the system to uh, keep, yeah. you know, each other down? Uh, and that's a known fact that black people have always been trained to police each other, basically. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Pretty. I mean, you can go out there, you see the black the black popos and all that, man, they're working for the system, man. I mean, they're black mm-hmm. just like you, but they're paid to keep you, you know, within the laws that's been yes, created sir. after they stole after they stole everything. 
you know, so mm-hmm. you can't get yours back. So they done made it a law for you to steal your take your stuff back that they stole right. in the first place. But uh, right. the rappers, you know, uh, they we know that each and every generation of rappers that they bring out uh, influences the youth. Yes, and it influences sir. the, uh, you know, it influences some of the adults even. I see adults walking around with their pants down. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I couldn't believe brothers. I mean, they look damn near almost as old as me, almost in their mm-hmm. 50s and, and got their pants down. I'm like, this is crazy, you know what I mean? But, you know, it's our people, some people with weak minds, it don't even matter how old you are. You know, the young mm-hmm. people and the old people, I'm not really blaming the young people for anything. I'm blaming the old people, basically. I'm blaming mm-hmm. them because they are supposed to be teaching us Young people, now I'm still young compared to the old people I'm talking about, how to be mm-hmm. free, how to, to be free. But they were tricked and they believed in the system. They didn't believe that they were going to be treated right because the system told them they were going to treat them right. But they should have had a backup plan. You know, right. they should have always kept a backup plan. Any smart person will have a backup plan. But, you know, we were led by leaders that were selected. Uh, not by us, but by the, you know, the system. We didn't elect them to do anything for us, and that's how the system been basically doing. They pick our leaders, they pick everything. So right. we want to get into this the rapper thing. We want to bring this information out from you, and I want to ask you one question for you to start out with. This thing about Quincy Jones trying to uh-huh. uh, get Tupac to make love to him. You know, uh, uh, this is a that I heard, and I want to know how much do you really know? Is this true, or this is just rumor? Well, I mean, there was a interview at the Source mm. magazine, this guy named Rob Marriott. This interview was all over YouTube and what have you. I mean, it's not hard to find. It was an interview where Tupac was engaged to Kadada Jones, who's Quincy oh. Jones' uh, daughter. And at that time, they were, you know, trying to get married, what have you, so on and so on. So Tupac went to the house, and Quincy, I don't know if he opened the door or he received them, but he basically dropped his pants, took him in a room and tried to drop his pants and say, hey, you know, you got to hit me up if you want to get into that next level. Because remember, as I said last week, there are two sets of rituals for the recording industry, whether you are, you know, a rapper, singer, you know, uh, comedian, doing anything that requires your voice and your likeness to go along with that to make your image, okay? Or an actor, you know, and and that, the periphery of that. So directors too, you know, Spike Lee and all those people, you know, that we know as directors. I don't know about John Singleton, but more than likely he is. He's just laid back and you know, he he do what he do. But the point I'm making is is that there's two sets of rituals. So when you go in them, you got to go through the different rituals. Now, remember, Quincy Jones is a mogul, so he's a boss. But, you know, to the big guys, he's just, he's still a middleman. He's up there, but he's a middleman on the black hand side. And he told Tupac hmm. that, and Professor Griff says, and I'm quoting, so I don't want nobody, you know, I researched that myself, of course, because I listened to the interview, and not only that, I know Rob Marriott. But anyway, the point I'm making is, is he's, he, Gr- Professor Griff says after he did that, he was marked to death, because he wasn't going to go through the next ritual to get to the next level. The drop on Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones has brought uh, LL Cool J to Hollywood, um, Will Smith, Tevin Campbell, um, I believe, I think he was instrumental in Latifah being there as well. So anybody who comes through him seems like they, they, they same sex in it. So do you think LL Cool J uh, did the mobile? Is a what? Did you think uh, Do you think that LL Cool J bent Quincy Jones over for the deal? Um, could be, could be. They they freaky, so he, no telling who did what. But more than likely, yes, because LL is at that you know that high level. He's at. Remember, if you follow the pattern, and this I say this continuously in my book named 
Boom, bye, bye, hip hop will never die. And by the way, I didn't get to big it up last week, so I want to tell people if they want to look me up, I'm at Black, B L A K, Smith, in parentheses, again, Black, B L A K, Smith, with two F's, S M I F F, in parentheses. You can look me up there, you know, friend me. If you want the book, it's on www.lulu.com, that's L U L U.com. Where it says bookstore, put my name in. It's come blacksmith. I have two books. My first one is named I Ain't Perfect, but take it from me. And you can cop either one of those books, whether it be hardback, ebook, or paperback. So anyway, my brother, getting back into what we're talking about, LL Cool J and people like that. Yeah, you, know, you never know if you look at the patterns. There are two rituals when you are recording artists and when you're an actor. So you have to go through all of them in order to get to that point. And now, LL, for a lot of those out there who don't know who he is, from 25, 30 years ago, he was rapping. In fact, his first um, album came out in 1984. So he's 30 years in the game just as a rapper, you know, forget about the acting and all of that. But like with Will Smith and Latifah and maybe one or two other actors, Ice Cube is another one. A lot of our younger people listening don't know that these guys started off rapping, and in some cases, some of them gangster rappers. Hmm. Oh, it's well, crazy. I had a, I, I had addressed uh, Queen Latifah uh, being so uh, militant back in the day when she started out, and yeah. now the Queen Latifah of this too. today. Mm-hmm. Hmm? Well, and well, I also, I also. I also posted about uh, Ice Cube, you know, saying mm-hmm. how he, you know, how lethal injection and all that, you know, music, yeah. gangster, I mean, not gangster music, but kind of, you know, I guess the system music. And then now today, the Ice Cube you see today, you know, mm-hmm. uh, do you think, I mean, people say they sold out. I say they sold out. What do you think? What does selling out mean to you, bro? Well, it being used by the system to uh, put an image out there, which is prevalent, like Queen Latifah, everybody knows and suspects, well, she came out anyway, that she was gay before she ever came out. And right. that image of uh, the bull dagger type sisters walking around the neighborhood, like in that movie she played and set it off, is right. all around you. I know you can see it. You live in New York. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They even have their own part of they have their own part of town there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and that, like we have some callers, we have some callers. <laughs> we got we have Greenwich Village, <laughs> YMCA. <laughs> okay, this group is a gay group. You know what I'm saying? Double uh-huh. what's the name them the same YMCA, the Village Boys brothers, or whatever they call them. You know uh-huh, what I'm saying? Yeah, Four yeah. homo. Uh-huh. Village people. You know village what I'm saying? People. So, <laughs> yeah, village people, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Damn, I'm listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 bro. Let, let me just say this. Truth, doctor, let me say this real quick to the people because a lot of people out yeah. there, you know, they stressing over this stuff, man. Don't stress over it, man. Just... You know, you got to have fun with this stuff, too. So people got to be out there. You know, they can't be stressing, oh, this one is gay, this one is this, this one is that. Man, them people, well, you know what they have to go through. Go ahead. Let, let me tell you something. Brother, the men are protectors of the women. What type of gay mm-hmm. men you know going to be out there fighting the battle to protect their women? Black men are the only men out here who don't protect their women the way they're supposed to. People could come in your neighborhood, any race I've seen it, and just come mm-hmm. in and just gap for your women. There's nothing you do about it. Uh, the women don't respect most of the black brothers' cause. Most of the lot of black brothers are weak because all they see in women is sex objects. And, and, mm-hmm. and society is portraying the sex objects. Rap, uh, Hollywood, all that stuff is portraying black women as sex objects. They got this movie that comes on, I mean, it's on TV, where the mistress of the president is a black woman. It's the number one TV show. Mm-hmm. So if that's the number one TV show, that means that for black women, it's been a survey. This is the mind that's being projected to the black woman to be the bottom hoe for the white man. And that's success. 
and that's the way it's been since we've been here. Just being masters, if they say it. It's, I've seen it in so many movies. Have you ever seen Uncle, uh, 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 Bye Bye Uncle Tom? Goodbye Uncle Tom? Right. If you haven't, you should check it out. And the movie, the uh, before it starts out when the girl was getting prepped up to go to the master, the virgin, the lady told her it's a, it told her it is a honor to be broken by master, you know. So look here, we got some callers in here, and I'm gonna let uh uh six one seven two in to ask some questions, to ask you some questions here. So hold on for a minute, let me let them in. Okay, let me let let them in. All right. Okay, let's see here. Okay, let me see. Hello. Six one seven two. Are you in? Five oh four three oh three six one seven two. Yes, I'm here. I know. Yes. Oh, how you doing, brother? Uh do you, you wanna doing, ask a question? No, nah, I'm just I'm just listening in because I um had listened to part one earlier. Um, this is Brother Steve, Brother Osmar. Mm-hmm. Oh, how you so, doing, Brother Spirit? Uh, you know you Steve, already Steve, on Steve. now, so you might as well ask you might, you might as well ask the question. No, don't run away from us. Go ahead and ask the brother a question. Anything you got on your mind? You listen to part one. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. Um, is what, what I wanted to say was. Well, what I wanted to comment about part one was I just wanted to say that um, damn near everything you said, you know, about like NWA and, you know, back in the rap in the 90s was like real conscious and we are so mm-hmm. dearly missing that today. So dearly missing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so I wish, you want me to, I wish you want me to come back. back. Would you like me to address that or is that just a comment? Yeah, yeah, you, you could address it. Oh, well, you know, uh, the problem that I have with black people is that we have to understand, I said this at least three or four times last week, most of these people are really under control and they have no choice in doing it. You don't go to them and ask them for acceptance. They come to you and say you in this shit. So we got to understand that. We really have to understand that. Now, some people are squeaky or weird or whitewash and they go for it and they learn to accept it but most don't and some of them I mentioned last week and unless they I need to use them as a real example because I don't know for sure but you know you can look at these people and if you investigate their life you can put two and two together and connect the dots so I don't like people telling me they hate this person or or that person or whatever because it goes deeper than even what I can tell y'all. In right, researching right. the book, I've written two books already. In researching some of these books, you will learn 5,000 worth of pages, and you can only write two or 300 of it. you got to decide what's going to get taken out, like a movie. You probably shoot right. 200 hours of footage, and you're only going to use one and a half. So you really got to understand that there's a lot of there's a lot more to this than I can say. Because I ain't never go through none of them. But there are people who are dealing with it every day. And when we see them, they drive in a nice car, got the nice clothes, got the nice lady. We don't know what they go through. So, you know, you know, the ones that accept it is the ones that I really got a problem with. And they are obvious ones because those are the ones that reach the top. Well, right, Brother right. Black, mm-hmm. um, I, um, I myself personally believe that some of these Negro peons are conscious of what they're doing, and they continue to do it. And I, myself, basically believe that every man has a choice, you know. And this is what this bullshit black people got to stop talking about. I don't have a choice, and I'm going to get a check no matter if I got to fuck over the rest of the race. You know what I'm saying? This is the sh- this is This is what my... Radio program is all about the upliftment of black people and the transformation of their mind, body, and soul, and what and how they feel, and how they feel and treat each other. Because it's no way in 2014 that black people should be rocking around here still screwing each other, and we see how this system and what this system has in store for us and well, our I- children are not are not even under our control.
control no more. They can boom by, kick your door, and somebody make a call. Any of your neighbors mad at you and make a call and say you beating your children. Next thing you know, child protection agency kicking your door down and taking your children out. So, you know, we living in a system, man, where we don't have no control, basically. I don't know if you have any children, but these children today, brother, they will do stuff when they want to do anything and bring the people in the, uh, in the system right through your damn door. And uh, these rappers, right. they, and they, they, these rappers, they, um, you know, they follow the children. They know the children follow these rappers. These children, some of them in school can rap the whole story but can't read. They can rap every rap that's out there today, word for word, verbatim, but can't read the damn book or do mathematics or anything, and they dyslexics and all this other stuff. So to say that these people don't know what they're doing and they can't see the effects that we see every day, I say that they do know what they're doing and they do have a choice to quit, run, leave. Some people done left because I, I, it was a letter circulating on the Internet uh, about last year, maybe a year and a half, where the brother was telling the whole story about how they came in and started making these deals in the early days, the rappers, when, they, when, this, when, when, when the industry was taken over by the record industry and everything that, you know, that's running. And that's how some of these things are even written. They got people that sit back and write these songs and these things for these people. And they, 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 they say them because they pick them to say them. And they make them famous, the ones they want to be famous. And they project the gay image and, you know, in football, basketball, brothers wearing pink and brothers coming out talking about the gay, the damn black president calling you up because you gay. He ain't never called nobody up and said, welcome for being consciously black or anything like that. So what's your opinion on, on, on what I just said? My opinion on what and then I, I want would... to... Then yes. what? Yeah, then I'm going to bring another caller in for, for a question. I'm going to bring uh, 6835 in. So 6835, get ready with your question. I'm going to bring you in next. So go ahead. Okay. My opinion on what you said is, is that I'm going to give you a scenario, okay? You asked me if yeah. I have kids, you know, children or whatever, you know. <laughs> so we're going to put the children. Yeah, you know on. children. I bet the I meant to say children. I don't like to use the word kid because it's a goat, but all these words and stuff is uh, tricky in America. Hey, it's all good, brother. It's that, 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 that wasn't the point of why I was saying that. The, the point is, is this. All right, you at a 20 million level, and in order to get to the 50 million level, you got to do another sacrifice. Okay, you don't want to sacrifice him, but we going to kill your oldest son. Mm-hmm. Not you. We're going to kill your son if you don't do what we say. Mm-hmm. Okay, what do you do now? Well, uh, Michael Jackson, when they were getting ready to kill him, he went public. And he came on there and started talking about Tommy Mottola and the slave and got Johnny Cochran and, and everything. I mean, he, uh, there's one thing I can say about Mike. He was, he uh, he was brave to come out. Well, he's dead now, but at least he came out. But the people, see, if we get the people in the right mindset, is what the objective of my radio show is, then things like this won't be happening. And when Mike come out and say people's fucking with him, they we will stand up by his side, just like they used to back in the day when Muhammad Ali got in trouble. All oh, Jim Brown, uh, 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 Lou Alcindor, and uh, all the basketball stars in uh, Different conscious brothers came together and sit by his sides, by the side of them brothers. You know, okay, things so, started going down. So you're going to pay your own way and take 50 people with you to secure Michael Jackson from a drug overdose, right? If well, we're to, not talking about we're not we're, we're not talking about the drug overdose because if Michael Jackson would have had brothers like the brothers back in the day when we was together and thinking on the same wavelengths about the uplifting of our people, shit like that wouldn't have got that far with Michael Jordan. Okay. Yeah, they would have brought him to the side. Like the Nation of Islam, let me just tell you this. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad cured more drug addicts in America than any other uh, drug program that ever existed in America. And that's cool, but it ain't stopping them from doing what they want to do. And that's all going to be over with soon, brother. The 
things that's happening now, the money got revalued yesterday. Everybody's going to have what they need. The money was reset last week. I write about it on my blog all the time. The, my blog name is www.black, number two, just two, not number sign, Africa, A-F-R-I-K-A, dot blogspot, dot com. And I wrote about these things. You know, so all you got to do, and I advise everybody out there listening or, you know, you know, anybody within earshot of what I'm saying, to just keep continue living your life, you live in it, and just let this shit happen, man, because there's no way in the world we as a people are going to rise up against white people. So no, no, we're we not gotta, talking about... We're not, no, 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 no. We're not talking about... Me, I'm not talking about armed rebellion with guns and knives and warring, you know, in, in the typical way we think of war. I'm talking about just rise up when it's the right time, and it's going to be the right time soon. Keep on living. You know, so... Hip hop is the expression of the generation that needs to most be motivated in order to see that happen. And I'm talking based on energy. So we got to be generals, excuse me, we got to be captains and lieutenants in the game. We got to let the wise OGs, the ones that know the real time, that ain't trying to take us to church or to, you know, you know, being thugs, you know, be balanced. You know what I'm saying? Practice my eye. That's what this is about because hip hop at its ultimate goal wants to be about my eye, where there's natural order. So let's even well, go beyond my, I, my celebrities eye, and all that. My, you know? My art has to be taught, you know what I'm saying? And we're not talking about uh physical, you know, even though it may get the physical. We're talking about uh spiritual and and knowledge and conduct and morals and the changing of the minds of the people. That's what mm -hmm. the, the revolution that we got going on, you know, I don't know how many people strong it is. I wish I could take the statistics on Facebook and other other social sites where black people is on here now teaching and spreading news to other black people of uh, information that they wasn't aware of. I've had many cases in the three years I've been on Facebook. It might have been a little bit longer than that. Uh, from people that have come to me personally and thanked me many times. I can't even count selling them things that they did not know. I mean, people in college and everything. So uh -huh. the thing is, is we got to teach our people, like you wait, making them aware of these things and your opinion in the book. You know, you know, we all have our opinions on different things. So I'm going to yeah. let this um this listener in uh, to see what their question is and what their opinion is on what you've been saying and what I've been saying. So I'm going to let 6835, okay, 6835, you're on. Yo, what's up, Akbar? This is Craig Nywaiter, brother. I'm enjoying the show. How you doing, brother? You got any questions? Uh, you know, come on, I'll give it up now. We we uh, here, you know, add your, your two cents in. Well, yeah, you know, I think um, um, my, my my question to the brother is, when you talked about uh, Tupac, um, it, it was um, was Tupac um, was it true? Because I heard him say that that Dr. Dre, he always looked soft to me, was was, was a <clears throat> sucking sucking vagina, I mean sucking a penis and, and, and eating vagina, and that's what I heard, you know, clear. A uh, 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 recording yeah. of Tupac saying that, yeah. and that was real clear. And and I heard and I saw writings of Tupac, you know. And now you have people in this cat on Facebook, you know, that said, you know, this was lie. He was making this stuff up. But then you have Easy E corroborating a little bit, mm -hmm. saying that the brother was soft yeah. and you know he, he was lying and, and and he was he came up with a fictitious background to act all hard and so forth. So you know what do you, what do you say about that, brother? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Your name is Craig, right, brother? Yes, yes. Okay, Craig, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I don't know, you know, with, unless it's somebody like like people who come out or Frank Ocean or one of them dudes that tell us that they that they get down like that. It, look, they have parties in New York, L.A., Nashville, wherever the, there's a, I'm talking more or less recording scene now. I'm not talking about acting and all that. Even though New York is everything, L.A. is everything, and Nashville is a little of both, too, because of its country and jazz uh, uh, background. But the point I'm making is, is this. Okay, there's what people say. There's what 
happens, and then there's what people say what happens, and they don't have the story right. So for me to say Dre is definitely gay, I would never say that because, you know, I don't go to those parties. But when you go to any parties that are industry-oriented, whether it be South by Southwest or you go overseas to a music festival or something like that, everybody that had, you know, like colleges have, like, like reunion day or, you know, uh, revival or whatever, homecoming, you know, parties in different clubs all over that city, whether it be New York, D.C., Houston, wherever. And in that case, when you go to those music festivals, people have parties in separate places. And Cat Williams mentioned the mansion party. And this is where a lot of this stuff happens. And what they call them is NH party, and the NH means it never happens. And when you see people in Hollywood and in, you know, the recording industry covering their mouth like saying shh with their finger, that's what that means. It never happened. So you don't even deny that it happened or it didn't. It never happened. So there ain't nothing to talk about. That's what that means. So it sounds like to me the old. The, it sounds like to me the old Masonic thing, what they call throwing it out the window. Like you know right. when you know you ask them a, a Mason a question instead of them answering it, they act like they don't know. Exactly. And, for, and, and in fact, Little John's comment we take to to probably you know make fun of now, but they used to say it from the window to the wall. Meaning it don't leave anything in. Any structure has a wall. Most have mm-hmm. windows. Not all, but most. Hey, Akbar, can I make a comment? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I think I think um the issues with the hip hop nowadays is that uh, one, you got men who are little bitches. I'm sorry, Akbar. I, I, I don't mean. Can I use that for fan? Yes, brother, go ahead. It's just a okay. expression You're ready. Yeah. of the English language, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay, I, I just want to respect the terms of your show. But anyway, um, but yeah, you know, you got men that can solve. And I think um, a lot of the hip-hop is like it has affected what the brother's saying is it has affected even our so-called Pan-African organizations, okay? Because a lot mm-hmm. of them, are, they solve against this homo agenda. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's an onslaught, yeah. and now you know it, it, everybody wanna wanna whisper, wanna whisper the homos all up in the organization, and they don't want to speak. You know, very few people are publicly against this homo onslaught, and, and like Umar mm-hmm. Gandhi, you know, he 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 keep he a consistent one that that stay he you know he define what a Pan African is and so forth. And so hip hop, this whole onslaught of of homosexualizing everyone is it's not just affecting hip hop. It's affecting people in the conscious yeah. communities. I know I know people who call themselves Pan Africans and they won't they won't publicly come out against gays. On the street. Yeah. Like I you know, and, and I ain't saying no names, no organizations. Some of them do some good work, but I'm just saying I've seen it and I go and I just shake my hand and go, What the hell going on here? Like, you know, we we trying to redefine Pan Africanism and, and I just wanna end with this. Umar Johnson has said a a homosexual came to him and said, Look, Look, I, I'm a Pan African too. You know, I want to be down with you. And Umar came back with a real, uh, you know, concise, you know, re- response. He said, "Look, he said, look, I ain't trying to kill you or nothing, but you're not no Pan African because you know Pan Africans mm-hmm. are about life, and you your, your lifestyle is about death. Mm-hmm. Your lifestyle, you cannot create life. And, and, and so, and so, what I'm saying is, at the, at, in closing, I just want to say that you know, Umar was one of the few people that actually would say that, and I think that's also the problem." In hip hop, people are afraid because it, it's 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 not morality. It's it's money over morality. Correct. You know, and I just Correct. I just feel like that. And yo, and yo, Akbar, man, keep chopping at the bit, brother. I like I appreciate your work, man. Much respect. Craig, I want to say this to you. Uh, I don't want you, you to hear it thank on you, I want to say it to you. I want to say this to you directly. Okay. There's nothing wrong homosexuality. There's something wrong with the homosexual. I don't hate. Homosexuals because they're homosexuals I hate homosexuality I don't have no problem saying that in front of anybody And in fact I lived in Atlanta And I know plenty of homosexuals And the ones that I can get along with Is the ones that I can say that to And they respect it because they know what I mean So that's what I always say There's what you hear, there's what has been said And there's what actually happened Well 
uh, the opinion of the host of this show on homosexuality <laughs> is it's a great abomination. It's a great abomination, and uh-huh. it is a product of white supremacy because uh-huh. of the Caucasian people. Because see, homosexuality has been taboo and always been taboo. Now it's an onslaught on Africa, where they tried to go into Africa and force the countries that's using the World Bank and owe them money and all that stuff to make legislation to let homosexuality exist because homosexuality is part of their population population control program to reduce the population of the earth. And if you uh, in Georgia, they have the Georgia Gillstone, and on the Gillstone, the number and the date of how many people they want to be on earth is right there in front of the people's faces to be seen because the Illuminati know that you are deaf, dumb, and blind, and zombalized, and walking around as a vessel just being ready to be programmed for the next play and show that they have for you. So, you know, that's what our people have to understand. All these things are, that are unnatural are detrimental to our community is disease, is disorder, it's uh, being pushed on to our children, and homosexuals are natural predators. Homosexuals mm-hmm. are not born, they are created. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Hey, 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 By I you know, I, I, yes, I just want to say, I, I just want to say one thing that the, the fact that everything you said is on point. Uh, uh, what I'm saying is that the fact that the onslaught, you, the reflection of the onslaught, is, is is reflected in your host being an apologist mm. for homosexuality. Like, like you know, like I didn't say all. I was expressing the onslaught of homosexuality on our people, and immediately his retort mm. was, "I don't have no problem." First of all, I never implied you did. But but part of the onslaught is that we have to become we become apologists and sympathizers with being not homosexualized me. and being feminized. You know what I'm saying? Not me. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. And so the first and so the first thing you said to me was I don't have no problem with him. And that's what I'm saying is is that that that's the that's the that is the homosexualizing and feminizing effect of the onslaught. The first thing we have to do is say, whoa, whoa, whoa I, I'm not against you. I, I don't I don't want, I don't hate you. See, and that's the that's the problem. It's not about hate. It's I about don't. it's I about don't. see, but, but 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 who? But that's not the topic. I didn't even question that. That's what I'm saying. But but the, the onslaught makes yeah. you feel yeah. that way. It's just like a Jew. It's just like a Jew that say, I got black friends. I got black friends because they know that they, they know me, that let, they are. Let, let me let me intervene in this. One of the main reasons that most people are guarded towards not speaking about homosexuality because the homosexuals have become gatekeepers to all the different things, like to the rap industry, to the book entry, writing a book or something. I mean, you can't really be seen. I can understand the brother, you know, because he's going to be heard by people. I can understand if even if he did, it's, 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 they will ban your books. They will, you know, you, you did like, look at Shabba Ranks. Shabba Ranks said he don't believe that God made homosexuality which they, and he lost a career. You know, I mean, they these homosexuals are in high places and they are running things. Even the ex president Bush was a homosexual uh, boy, a pedophile. Uh not as uh the son, well he probably was too, but they got the rituals down there at the Bohemian Grove and all them little freaky things they be doing and burning little babies and bonfires and on the front of the owl you know, worshiping that owl because the owl can see in the dark. So they use that symbol because they can see, the Illuminati can see through everything while all the people are sheeple in darkness is living and being led by the evil shepherds. So that's why a lot of people are guarded against saying things about homosexuality. But Brother Alba, don't give a fuck about... Nobody that look, brother Osmar Muslim, the truth doctor don't give a fuck about what nobody thinks. Homosexuality is a nasty, dirty, abominable thing. <laughs> and if it was me that had the law, the law, I would slay them if they didn't stop. I would give them a chance. I'm not I'm gonna be no guy that just gonna what's the name, but their heads will roll. And that even in Islam, you know, but you know, to a certain, depending on what type of Muslim you are, because the Arabs, they're hypocritical with that stuff. But they hide mm-hmm. the women behind veils and screw the boys. But in black African Muslims, 
if they even suspect you, you're gone, brother. But Islam teaches, and there's one reason why, and I'm not a Muslim, but I respect this in Islam. And in Christianity, has laws against it, too. You know, but they see, they want the population because of resources. Resources are out there, and they know that it's a time limit before they exhaust it. The less people, the more resources to go. If they got you wasting your seed in a man's behind, butthole, that means that you're not going to be producing no more people. So this thing is part of, it's in the Similac milk. Women are not breastfeeding their babies to inherit all that DNA and all the different things in that milk, their, 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 um, their immune system. That's where AIDS come from because people don't even have an immune system from a baby because they're not inheriting their mother's immune system because their mother's feeding them uh, some stuff the white man calls a formula. You know what I'm saying? It's mixed up. This is how crazy we is. We're taking formulas because of social engineering. So I like to say, you know, the brother has a relevant question, you know, and I don't think the brother really was trying to, you know, attack you. It's just everybody is guarded politically, especially when you're in the world and you're dealing with these people. If you're working every day and all this stuff, let me tell you something. I had a girlfriend back in the day. In Detroit, she had a gay uh, cousin, a girl. So the gay cousin girl uh, asked me, well, she wanted to come in town into Detroit because they lived in the suburbs to um, do some business. And I was like, you know, I don't know. But I said, because, you know, I really don't like these people in my house because, like, their spirit, their spirit can jump off them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they even have names for the spirits. I'll talk about them later, but we should, I don't want to get too far away from hip-hop. So I let her come. This lady cleaned my house when I was at work. Everything so good and everything. So two days went by and stuff. I think she left on the third day and went back to the suburbs. And about a week later, I go to the bank, and um, my checks bounce. I had, look, these persons have went and got my old checks that I had disregarded and written them and took them to targets and all different type of places. They had a homosexual network. You know what I'm saying? There's one thing about homosexuals, I will say. They got unity in that freaky shit. You know what I'm saying? And if we had the unity they had protecting their way to getting bent over, we would be free. <laughs> 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 I'm going to let the next call in. I'm going to let you out for a minute, brother. I'm going to come back at you, all right? All right, I'm going to let the last call in. All right. Brother Craig. <laughs> brother Craig, he, he died. He, he, he got Here we go. Two. It's one, 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 one. I don't know. I've never seen it come up like that. Hello, caller. Hello, one, one, one. Caller. They're just saying what up. That, that's the intelligence agency letting us know that that's where the flight is at that disappeared in Malaysia last week. Yeah, hello? That's them, that's them yeah. calling. Hello? Okay. Yes, how you doing? Somebody calling? I'm just listening. Oh, you just listening? You don't have any questions, anything you want to put out there? No, just, no, just not yet. I'm just listening. Okay, then I'm going to put you back out there. Okay, I'm going to go to uh, 6417. 6417, if you want to uh, say something, uh, I'm going to agree to let you in. Go ahead and let us know quickly if you're going to say something or not. Uh, 6417. Hello? Somebody listening and fell asleep. 6417. Next. Okay. Nah, they're not saying anything. Let's go to the next one. I got the, another one hitting me. Uh, take them back out. Okay, 6051 from New Jersey. Looks like my hometown, 973. Okay, here we go. Okay, 6051. Do you have any questions? Peace. Peace. How you doing, brother? Oh, what's going on, brother? I was just listening. I caught the end of your show. Um, I didn't yeah. really have any 
questions because I didn't hear what the brother was saying, but I will um say that uh the brother uh Craig I think his name was he did make a good points, but I heard oh, your whole it kind of sound like sympathizer of homosexuality to me. You know, he he, he kind of was on he was kind of like on guard or something like that. But I didn't really hear the whole show, so I can't really make no uh. I didn't really have any questions. Well, you, 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 you at the 973, right? You at 973. Yes, sir. Yeah. New Jersey, what part of Jersey you at? I'm in Patterson. All right. Oh, well, you should know, man. The brother, uh, he's from New York, man, so you know you got to be careful in New York. They got homo gangs down there. They're jumping people for being against homosexuals in New York. New York I'm from New York. Joint, brother. That's what it was. We're in this village. They had a riot back in the day. They used to call them homo thugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh. brother, I'm telling you. They got homo thugs in New York, I'm telling you. New York is yeah. something else, brother. You go there and tell hey. about, you know, you against homosexuals. Because I used to sell, I mean, I'm, I'm not proud of it, but back in the day when I used to sell weed, I used to sell weed in Washington Square Park in New York. Yeah, in and, um... Yeah, and they, they was down there then, man. Nobody ain't bothering them people as long as they ain't bother you. But the thing is, is it wasn't really in the black community like it is now. Yeah, See, now yeah. it's become a black problem in our community with our young brothers. I'm talking about young brothers and young sisters in middle uh-huh. school and elementary school talking about they buy curious and all kinds of stuff like that. that my yeah. daughter came home at me one time. She said, Dad, she said, what is... Uh, by curious and I ain't just, it took me a while to think about it and then after I put it together I think I called my sister or something and I was like you know what who the hell asked you this and that and you know these young girls you know had told her that she was like that and she used she liked my little son to try to get to the daughter and this was it was in elementary school they was in fifth grade at this time so this oh. thing is deep, man, and I, and I had to call on all the parents and everything. I was so pissed off I didn't know what to do, you know what I'm saying? But um, they come to find out they had a sex ring. The older girls were trading off their little sisters to each other. Mm-hmm. So this thing is serious. I mean, it's a serious thing. You walk every day when you go outside and here in Philly. That's all you hey, see, man. man. Brother Akbar, they used to have, see, we have to yeah. understand some things. You have to understand certain things. Back when black people were enslaved in this country, they had sex farms. So if you want to yeah. see where the sex farm coming, you I'm sure y'all watch both of y'all watch Django, right? Uh, I've seen a Django. little bit of it. Okay. Yeah, no, nah, I never seen it. I, I wouldn't watch it. Okay. Well, let me just mm-hmm. say what happened. There was a certain part when they was in John Candy's house, who was Leonardo DiCaprio's role. And there was a bad sister, a bad sister. And the whole time she was checking Jamie Foxx out like, should I give him some pussy? That nigga look like a real nigga, you know, like that. And the point I'm making is is that there have always been, especially in in the Louisiana Louisiana area, when you had quadrooms, octoroons, and all that stupidness, or you one eighth black if you got, you know, one drop of white blood and the rest is black and all that. You real fine and all that because you got mixed blood and all that, all that bullshit. All I'm saying is, is that we've been taught by those who honor the ancient Greeks. And you know who the ancient Greeks are because they were supposed to be the first white civilization. So now you update that to 2010, 2011, 12, 13, 14 now. You know what I'm saying? We've been around these people in earnest over 500 years, and we've taken on too many of their characteristics. Homosexuality is negative. I don't need to rail against it and start screaming and foaming at the mouth about that. It's offensive to me. But, you know, I don't have to be offensive about saying that. I don't like it. You know, everybody's acting like I'm apologizing for them and saying they should exist and all this and that. They should do what they do amongst themselves, have their own neighborhoods, and you cannot recruit where we live, and if you do and we catch you, you're going to jail for 20 years. If you actually violated a young person under age who didn't seek that, you go, you you getting killed. Yeah, but they got all these Catholic priests that's walking away free, 
And they've exactly. been raping boys for, for, for hundreds of years, but it's part of their rituals anyway. Yes. You know, that exactly. thing has been a part of the European ritual because what it does is it vows you to secrecy. And so mm-hmm. if you are a heterosexual when you started out, and you take the deal because you are hungry for money, fame, success, and all that type of stuff. You sold your soul. You know, you sold <laughs> your soul and your butthole all together in one. And um, that, to me, is unacceptable. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how much money that they have. Mm-hmm. I don't care if they had all the money that they had piled up in the tallest mountain that could it make. It's nothing uh-huh. worth losing your manhood. Because well, black people... No, I'm, let me finish. Let me finish, brother. Black I'm, people I'm in America, and I'm not talking about, huh? No, I said I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, black people in America and black men have been broken. We're prisoners of war, really. We're POWs. Our people were conquered, and we were enslaved, and then we were, were assimilated. We were never free because if we were free, we'd be somewhere ruling ourselves right now. We still under white rule. That's the way we always been. You know what I'm saying? Since we've been here. You know, so the thing is, is all that we've been freed and all that stuff, it's a certain level that where we're going to have to start, and I hate to say this, taking out some of these Negro beings that uh-huh. are out here tarnishing the the sacred sacredness of black manhood. Black man is trying to build his manhood back up. You know, from being torn down from slavery and oppression and all the different things that we went through because we was we were defeated by another people who had uh, sophisticated technological weapons that were more be- more better than what we had, and they defeated us and enslaved us, and some of our other people sold us into slavery. You know, they had Africans that were enslavers that sold us that were Arab Arab ties Africans that started out selling slaves to the Arabs, and once the Arabs lost their power in North Africa, started selling it to the Dutch, to King Leopold. You know, so um, our people been doing these things and selling each other out for years, and it's time for it to stop. And I don't really believe that, you know, because I would not even have you as a, a person on my show if I thought that you were apologetic or trying to push or 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 had any ways of spreading any type of homosexuality thing. I think that it was, you know, maybe, you know, you know, it's just guarding yourself if you're not like that. I'm a that's why I call myself the truth doctor, because I am not on guard for nothing. I'm telling my people the truth, whether they want to hear it or not, the truth hurts, but when it resonates in your mind it will set you free. Exactly. So there you go. I have no no issue with anything you just said, sir. Yeah, so the thing is is that we were talking about the hip hop thing, how it's controlled, uh-huh. how the people in there is controlled, and then we're gonna get back into that because we have almost turned this into the homo hour. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> but it's part exactly. of the hip hop thing. It's part of it but it is part of that hip hop get into the higher it's, echelon it's ritual. Part of the so we it's are well be dis- it's part of the rap thing. Yeah, we will be discuss we will be we'll be discussing some of it. Uh so now I wanna ask you a question about Biggie, Biggie Smalls, uh-huh. you know. Okay. And some people say that he was murdered because of Tupac's murder. Some people say today they putting it together that he was murdered to cover up for the murder of Tupac. What does your book, does your book talk about anything, or any of that? Uh, yeah, it talks about Biggie and Tupac, of course. Um, it's something I discovered while researching the book was that, uh, you know, I, I never saw it substantiated, but I've seen it, I've seen it put definitively and put uh, in, implicitly that Jimmy Iovine, I understand the whole flame for that. Jimmy Iovine is the owner of Interscope Records, and uh, the, which is the head, which was the head uh, label of um, uh, Death Row when it was still around. I don't know if they're still around today, but if they are, they're a shell of what they used to be. But the point I'm making is, is that he supposedly fanned that whole East Coast West Coast beef and fanned it after it started. You know, after Pac got shot in uh, Times Square Studios. New York, uh, 95, I believe. 
and then it became what it became. Now, as far as answering your question, I believe, this is belief now, I can't substantiate this, but I believe that Diggy was killed for the same reason you said in two, because I don't think he was going for the ritual. Not only that, one more thing to that. Biggie had bought his um, publishing from started Undies Records, which featured the Junior Mafia, which he was the leader of anyway. You know, remember the song Get Money and and uh, 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 some other songs that they made, but that was the big hit off of that album. And then um, he had uh, Little Kim on there and himself with Junior Mafia, and all of them sold platinum albums. So he didn't need Puffy no more, and he wouldn't be under Clive Davis and all of that. So there was three reasons for it. I don't know the real reason. It could have been all of that. It could have been something else, but it was all part of a great ritual, all of it. Mm. How about Clive Davis and Whitney Houston? Some people say that uh, they drowned her. Did your book talk Uh, about that? uh, Yes, sir. My book doesn't talk about, uh, of course, we don't know how she died because somebody could have the, – the best reliable information that I found on Whitney's death was that somebody gave her drugs that killed her over a few days because there were videos of her wilding out in, in like, places she was at that was exclusive, and it was only, like, 10, 11 people in there, maybe, like, three of them were with her but not sitting with her and so on, you know. And so what it, what it says basically was Ray J was selling her cocaine. He wasn't really her man. He was her supplier. And that uh, she died because she smelled Clive Davis uh, some years ago at a reception that was for her in her honor that he threw, but she didn't come because that was when she probably was in the last days of being married to Bobby Brown and doing the show and all of that. But basically he's her handler. And that's a big thing in the entertainment industry, somebody handling you. It could be your wife, your boyfriend, husband, girlfriend, mother, sister, best friend, cousin, manager, whatever. And everybody has a handler. So she could, she was high up. And Clyde Davis is no joke. Clyde Davis is like the president of the music industry as far as the face. Like Obama is just a face who represents the United States um, a corporation. She is the uh, she was the uh, R and B it girl for the most of the eighties and into the early nineties until her drug use became uh, over the top. So, you know, Clyde Davis in, indirectly was managing Biggie because he was Puffy's man. So, you know, it was a ritual, and everybody up there at that realm knows what happened because they all have a part to play in. So we back on now. Go ahead. Okay, brother. I don't know how far in y'all heard me. Um, what's the last thing you heard? Um, you were um talking about the ritual with Whitney Houston and uh Clyde yeah. Davis. Right. Well, Clyde Davis, like I said, is I call his I spell his name Davis, as in D E like Edward, G like Victor, I like Indian, S like Sam, Davis because he is one of the most devious devils in the in, in the recording industry that we know as a public face, as opposed to you know behind the scenes telling him what to do, because everybody has a handler. What and then you know, wasn't Whitney Houston's Aunt Dionne Warwick his first black act? Um, no, I don't know who his first. He goes back to the '60s. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know one of his R&B, by the way, saved the music industry. The music industry was going under in the early 70s. And then when R&B acts and funk acts like the Ohio Players, um, uh, most of the Motown people that came into the 70s, the Jacksons, all of them, the Temptations and all that, saved music, the music industry in the early 70s. I know that one of Clyde's first, Major acts was Earth, Wind, and Fire on Columbus on Columbia Records, CBS. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, because it seems like everybody that's tied to him is some mysterious 
things going on, even their careers, you know, are damaged or, you know, they start to mm-hmm. pop up there. They start to pop up there now. Uh, how many, how many dead on the Clyde Davis? Do you know that? How many what? Dead. It's an artist that he had that died while he was out. Phyllis Hyman. Phyllis Hyman. I go in on Phyllis Hyman in the Whitney section. So, you know, basically Phyllis Hyman um, released an album and Clyde Davis didn't uh, put it out. And if you know anything about the recording contract, you, they have a no-compete clause in there, meaning you can't sign with another label until two years, five years. And he didn't release her album, so she was between albums losing money because the album's not out. She can't tour because her, under her contract, she has to tour under the record label. And she committed suicide. Now, she could have committed suicide or they could have made it a suicide and made it look like one. I don't know. But that is a fact. He was she, and then he released her album maybe four months after she passed. I don't know the exact m- number of months, but it wasn't a year. Yeah, she was a beautiful sister. Um, yes, she was, time. brother. Yeah, she sung yeah. a lot of painful songs. You gotta say that she was in such such pain in her songs and everything. But a lot of people don't understand. A lot of these songs are written for you. They got writers yeah. and people that uh-huh. write these songs and put these songs out. And these songs are used to uh, control the people. Like they said, some of Prince's songs, and I don't know if Prince wrote them or they was written by by them for him. Like when you play them in the back, they go backwards and start talking about Satan and the devil and all that stuff. I remember they used to play they one call of Prince's records back. Yeah, they call that backmasking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah they... It, it, they said saying a whole okay. other thing that goes into your subconscious mind because he said that exactly. when it goes in your mind backwards, it comes out. They said that's one of the main reasons why we don't learn. Like I've noticed, like I read Arabic because I was deep into Islam back in the day, and Sunni Islam and Nation Islam first, though. Uh, but what happened is when they teach you Arabic, you read from your right to your left instead of English mm-hmm. your left to your right. And people are able to memorize the Quran. They have people that know the whole Quran. They call Hafiz a Quran. And it is a known fact that on your right side of your brain, this is where your knowledge is supposed to be going into. And, um, right. and it's easier to learn that way. They, they, that's why they got us back. But they said really dyslexic people are, you know, really, they have to go backwards and read backwards. So that's really them get right where everything is supposed to go in the knowledge part is really going into their left now. So when they see things backwards, I don't understand it, but uh, talk about the backwards stuff. They're playing this stuff, music backwards, and they're saying different things. Yeah, well, the back masking is basically because whatever you hear forwards, you hear backwards too. Now, it may be on a deep subconscious level, but you absorb it. And Professor Griff always talks about this. Uh, the beginning of my book starts with a uh, uh, Tavistock institution, which is an institution that sets the policy for all of the English Commonwealth nations. So anywhere English is spoken, they have an influence on everything that goes on in that country. And we know that they say that the sun never sets on the British Empire. So imagine how many countries that we're talking about right now. So they determine the policy and what becomes cool. So this is why you see certain styles come in every so often and you can't relate to it because it's not you're not 18, you're not 22 you're not impressionable. All young people want to do is fit in. That's all they want to do. So faulting them for wanting to fit in when we did the same shit we did stuff when we were, you know, that age in our early 20s. Some of us, like you said a little while ago at the beginning of the show, even into our 30s, we're still doing the stuff that young people are doing. And we all did it. So we can't be mad at somebody else. If we've never been in the position that some of these people attain, I'm not talking about the ones who don't like it. I'm talking about the ones, excuse me, I'm, I'm talking about the ones who don't like where they are and they got to do what they got to do in order to stay alive. You feel me? Before or keep their people alive because some people know you ain't afraid to die. So that is a weapon against you. All right, we ain't going to kill you. We're going to kill your mother. 
Kanye West. We gonna kill you if we know you ain't afraid to die like they did Bun D. Well, we know some of these people, old dirty bastard. I can name name after name after name. Biggie and Tupac. We've been talking about pretty much all these things. Janis Joplin. Jimi yeah. Hendrix. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Otis Shredding. Mm-hmm. Sam Cook. I mean, we can go on, brother. I don't want to do this, but you already know the point I'm making. Some people mm-hmm. ain't afraid to die. Do you know that Sam Cook was going to finance the struggle for Malcolm and Martin to get together and mm-hmm. say you don't need no money from no donations or campaign funds? Not that they ran for office. I shouldn't have said campaign campaign funds. You don't need to beg nobody from an organization that you represent. So King would be the SDLC and um, uh, Malcolm would have been the nation. After that was over, that was the period where that talk happened and all of them wind up pretty much dead after that in well, streams King, of three or four years. Well, once King took the payoff when he got that Nobel Peace Prize, you know, that's a million dollars and all sorts of trends and stuff, you know, he had he had took, you know, willingly or unwillingly, I don't, I don't know, but, you know, he took the uh, deal. And then once he backtracked on the deal, that's when he ended up dead, you know. I agree. Yeah, but um, I want to ask you about this other rapper that ate his girlfriend's face off or, uh, uh, or his friend's face off called Antron Singleton. They call him Big Lurch. Do you think that uh, was some type of ritual? Um, Big Lurch. I didn't, if Big Lurch died in L.A., is that correct? Yeah, he's out. he was out in L.A. He was a rapper. and um, Yeah, I remember, I vaguely remember about him. I know who you're talking about, but I never... I, I, he never interested me to a point of we, oh, uh, let me not say that because I'm interested. I love my people first of all, so that was that wasn't the right way I should have said that. Mm-hmm. Rephrasing it, I would say I think before I got to this level of research, I wasn't you know he had passed already, so I didn't. Mm-hmm. And he never became like somebody that became bigger than life, so I never really investigated into that. So I'm not going to comment on somebody I don't know much about. He became bigger than life <laughs> when he ate that girl's face off. I'm going I'm gonna to just uh, 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 give you a profile on him. Antron Singleton, born September the 15, 1976, better known by his stage name, Big Lurch, is an American rapper. He is serving life sentence for murdering 21-year-old roommate Tanisha Yais. Yais and eating parts of her body while under the influence of PCP in April 2002. So, you know, this, this, this thing really always, you know, I wondered if that was a, some type of Illuminati thing, too, you know, but I don't know. Some people say he was framed, though. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, I don't, I don't attribute everything to that entity. I mean, people do die, you know, and and if you really know how most of enter, most let, let's just say black entertainers, I don't want to get into the you know color thing, just so we don't confuse it. Most of the black entertainers die of three or four different things. They either die of a drug overdose, mm-hmm. uh, getting shot under some crazy ass mysterious circumstances. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, if they're a little older. Like, you know, a sudden heart attack, like Chakra Lumumba a few weeks ago. Yes. Or natural causes under some unnatural circumstances, like what happened to Isaac Hayes. They said Isaac Hayes died on a treadmill. But his worker, his nurse, that left him that night said that he could barely walk. So what would he be doing on a treadmill? We know he was a Scientologist. The interview that he gave on the Ben and Obi show is on my, on, in my uh, book, and it, they, he was definitely like, like how the, the the chick that plays in that TV show where the the husband is a UPS guy and she's a housewife, Leanne Remy, she just left Scientology. They dissed on her. Everybody from Scientology dissed on her. Okay, Isaac Hayes was a Scientologist. If you want to go hip hop. Dougie Fresh is a Scientologist. Now, how the fuck did that happen? And uh, what's his name? Farrakhan is a Scientologist now. Louis Farrakhan. Farrakhan is, Farrakhan is everything. He's a Shriner. 
He's in the NSA, all kind of shit. He's been a Mason for a long time, you know what I'm saying? He's all of that. He's all of that. People, Bobby Hammond always wonders if Farrakhan was just in, you know, stepped on. Mm Mm-hmm. That's right. Some people say that he took the deal when he got the cure for his cancer. I don't know. Well, I just watched the Manchurian candidate the other day. He could have been chipped off or cloned or whatever the case may be because he had that shit a few times, and every time he had it, he said he's going to retire, and then now he's doing 52-week tours that extended into this year. He's still doing it. It's all good, you know what I'm saying? I mean, again, if you're controlled, they can use you whether you want them to or not. They control it. There's really uh, no leader that I know of in place to take over from Farrakhan. The only one that would have been capable to me was Dr. Khalid Muhammad, and he mysteriously ended up dead and shot by uh, of a Nation of Islam member. Uh-huh. Even after he survived the shooting, he did a, a, a video about how Malcolm was shot down and how his and Malcolm was parallel, but he didn't right. die. But he didn't die. So, you mm-hmm. know, uh, you know, when he started talking about them Jews, Farrakhan turned on them, you know, and Farrakhan used to talk about the Jews, the Jaimes and all that stuff. You know, he just started getting weak. Once he got powerful and started getting TV time and overseas, going to see a Gaddafi and all these different countries and everything, it seemed like, uh, he got softer and softer. The white man stopped. They stopped his members from calling the white man the devil. And um, he went mainstream. Started hanging out with the, the biggest sellout, Coons, Black Pimps that there is. Louis Farrakhan started hanging out with Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. And like the yeah. But so what does that tell you? So what does that tell you? That, that it tells you that they're under control. And this is why I get this off with people. Now, I don't like Farrakhan. I don't have no problem saying that. And it ain't because of that. It would be because he used to endorse the killing of Malcolm, you know, for talking. Now, you deal with the traitors how you deal with them, you know what I'm saying? But Malcolm was... I'm going out on the limb and saying that. I had this discussion with plenty of people inside the nation of Islam, and like, yo, you're not going to tell me nothing different. You know what I'm saying? I give him his props. He gives out a lot of good information and all of that, but there's a saying in Africa that goes, even a broken clock tells the the truth twice a day. So it ain't about hating Farrakhan and the nation because of that. It's about, I don't like Farrakhan because he endorsed the killing of Malcolm. Mm-hmm. Well, my biggest thing, you know, I love Malcolm, but my biggest thing that I seen Farrakhan do was not just the killing of Malcolm, but the misleading and misguiding uh, uh, our people. You know, especially okay. that to, to the road to the road of uh, Islam, and he's not even really, you know, I mean, he's in between Islam one minute, he's in Arab countries the next minute. He's in churches. I mean, to get the man is totally confused. I don't know why some of the people with him they committed suicide. I would like to know what the number of Nation of Islam people that committed suicide. I would love yeah. to know the number because I mean, it's a lot of confusion. I used to be in the Nation of Islam, man. and um, yeah, I, I heard you. I know. I was sure. I mean, I wasn't in Farrakhan Nation of Islam. I was in the first, what they call the first resurrection. And um, as a little boy coming up and soon he turned into the Valerian Nation. The Valerian, that's when they stopped saying you could go to any mom. The devil Elijah Muhammad's son who took over and converted his followers to Syria. So, um, and they made his block name Valerian. They were more powerful to make him seem Valerian because Bilal was black. And they wanted to identify with a brother in the era, but the Arab stuff you know, was going to cut off his money, you know. And then the sad thing about it is he talked about his dad like the little young woman. He died in his uh, hot tub with a young 26-year-old wife. And he was in his 80s. So, 
you know, was coming around, you know, somebody's dad liked a little girl. He liked his young young girl too. You know, so it comes around, goes around. You see it over and over again. And our people gotta understand, like you said, these people are control. Some of them willingly, some of them some women they got so deep they don't know what to do. Still with me, brother? Hello? Yeah, I, I can't hear anything the brother's saying. I thought I can hear you a little bit. Oh, it, there's nobody else in here. It's just me and you. Oh, now, it was somebody in the background. I heard something. Oh, I don't know. Maybe anyway, brother, know. let's round this out because I know we don't have much time left, and if we get cut off right at 11, I want to get this out. Go ahead. Um, the, the, Today, or yesterday, I should say, was the date of the revaluation of the U.S. dollar in all world currency, $500 trillion account with backed by gold that we're supposed to be able to transfer a, a, a note, or not, I shouldn't say a note, a note is a debt, um, your currency into hard metal, meaning gold or silver, because there are entities coming to make sure that this all happens. And this is why lately, every time you see uh, TV or you watch the news, you have these crazy uh, events like the plane missing and what happened in Harlem a few days ago and Ukraine and all this other stuff, Venezuela and maybe a few other things. It's the Bitcoin scandal, the Labor scandal, and all of these scandals that have been going on for a few years now because the money is going to be evaluated and everybody who's alive is supposed to be compensated to the point where everybody should at least have what they need. I'm going to be very vague with that because I don't want nobody saying to me when they got to go to work Monday under the same system that I said that they're going to be free tomorrow. That's not what I'm saying. So I want people out there to really concentrate on that Look up revaluation 2014 or, you know, economic reset and these buzzwords. So you're saying that they're going to change currency to gold? What if you don't have no currency? What if we don't have what? You said they're going to change hard currency to gold. No, no, no. We're going to change your whatever paper you have. You'll be able to trade it in for gold if you wish to do that, or you can still use it to trade. There's going to be there's a, the economic reset has already been established, and a revaluation of the money is starting tomorrow. I've heard reports, and this is a hearsay, so I'm not going to go on record and saying this officially, but I've heard reports that the new money is in the banks already, and they're just waiting to implement. All of the so people keep it in paper from. Because earlier I'm on, in the early various sources, yeah, in the early nineteen in the early nineteen eighties, there was a, bro, a guy, a white guy named Ted Koppel that should come on Nightline, and he was uh-huh. talking about the uh, a coin and money. Uh, America wanted to, you know, implement uh, called the Amiro, which was going to be Canada, America. And Mexico was going to be all hooked up into this money, and they and right. they've been they've been developed it because I, you can, you can even Google the bills and the coins and stuff. Uh-huh. But they want uh-huh. to crack the economy first in order to implement this, and they they just been. I mean, they don't know. I don't. I think that they are scared to crash the economy because they don't know really what's going to happen if they can control the people. You know what I'm saying? Right. But they really right. need to, I don't understand why they just don't tell the people, look, we just about to switch over. Uh, we're going to bring the economy down. We're just going to switch I, over. I'm going to tell, tell you why. Because if they told you the economy is going to switch over tomorrow, they didn't have plans for you to be here yesterday. And if you learn what you needed to know yesterday, tomorrow, then you ain't going to go to work one day. Mm-hmm. They're going to play it to the last day. Yeah. So don't expect no ease up, you know, right away, you know, because these things have already happened. And if you look at, if you look up exactly what I said, I said economic reset 2014, 
Revaluation 2014. And you'll find too much information out there. I mean, most black people ain't talking about this stuff. Mm. You know, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, you know, today. Today was the 15th of March, the Ides of March. You know how many mm-hmm. people died in what they now call Italy or Rome? Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe 2,000 years ago, maybe right after, you know, maybe three years, 300, 200. I don't remember the number right now. Mm-hmm. And over 100,000 people coming, and, you know, and, and these devils is out of here. You know what I'm saying? I prefer to talk about all the devils who are going to be gone, and we can practice my eye. Because, like I said earlier in the show, the basic goal and the approach we want to take to hip-hop is to take it to a Mahat level. And there are people doing it. I don't want people to think hip-hop is dead. I want them to know that hip-hop is living. Hip-hop is dead on your television. Hip-hop is dead on your computer. Hip-hop is live in the club. People I'm talking sure. about exactly, you know, our Marvin Gaze and our Stevie Wonder. Talking about the underground, though, right? Well, not necessarily. It's just hip hop. Hip hop has no ground. Hip hop is hip hop. It could be on the radio. It could be in your earphone. You said it's not on the radio. It's not, you know, you can't, not on your TV. Where can you find this? You find it in the club. You find, and that's where you buy it from the people who selling it hand to hand, like it did back in the day when you listen to the tapes and the cabs and. Brother, we don't got too much time. I just want to give people my information one more time. The name of it is Boom Bye Bye Hip Hop Never Will Never Die, an expose on the entertainment industry with a focus on hip hop. My name is Black Smith, B L A K Smith. Look me up, friend me on Facebook. Hit me up on the inbox for your book. I'll let you know all the information and all of that. This is great. Let me let you have the last word. Yeah, well. All I want to say is it's been nice having you on the show, and I'm glad you came in to do number two, and I hope that it's it's successful as number one, that people are really downloading and listening to the information. And I want all our listeners to know, uh, you know, and those who are going to listen in later, that uh, we appreciate them uh, and we love them. So keep on Please. checking us out. Peace. Good night, my brother. Good night, brother.